so worlding, well, that, that's a new word for me. I looked it up in the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Um, and that's pretty exciting. And that's pretty much what we need when it comes to climate, as needless to say, this world isn't working so well for us. We better start envisioning some new ones and, and fast. So the projects that you guys are engaged in sound really fascinating. Um, as Kat mentioned, I've been engaged, um, you know, in varying degrees to you stories to drive change for a very long time. Um, I was the founding executive director of this organization that Peter Gabriel started. And the original vision, this may have been before you guys were born, I don't know, it was 1992. And uh, the original vision was to put video cameras in the hands of human rights activists so that they could document their experiences on the ground, um, you know, to see it, to film it, to change it. And uh, at that stage, a high eight video camera was high end and it cost $1,800. And needless to say, it was uh, not readily available to human rights activists around the world. So it started out with technology transfer, but it's just evolved so dramatically. Um, the internet came onto the scene, cell phones with you know video and uh, photography enabled. Um, and you know, the organizations had to reinvent itself um, many, many times over in order to stay relevant um, and to ensure that they're really maximizing the power and potential of story to drive change while ensuring the security of the people that are um, documenting these abuses, because of course, you know, they can be geolocated and the retaliations can be swift and severe. So um, it's really exciting to uh, you know to be here with you all. I'm now um, at USAID, and I, I suspect you might not all know what that is. Um, it's the largest development agency in the world. It is a federal agency of the U.S. government. It's my first time in the federal government, um, and I came because we have a $25 billion budget. We have 10,000 staff. We have a presence in 100 countries around the world. And um, I was asked to lead our work on climate. And the first thing I did was help us finalize our climate strategy that will take us through uh, 2030. And you know, it has a whole bunch of ambitious goals, um, including catalyzing $150 billion for public and private uh, climate finance and reducing carbon emissions by 6 billion tons, which is you know, the equivalent of all US emissions in a, in a given year and lots more. Um, but, uh, you know, my heart still very much lies in the importance of communication and the power and potential of telling stories. And I did a little bit of research because I think, you know, frankly speaking, federal agencies aren't known for their innovation when it comes to multimedia. Um, so I asked the team, I said, you know, what have we done that's really, you know, participatory and that has been focusing on engaging um, youth and communities to drive change? And um, one thing I learned about, which I didn't know about, and I think uh, Kat's going to put it in chat, is this 360 degree film we did inside gold mines in the DRC. Um, we, you know, obviously with um, the renewable energy revolution on the horizon, um, we're going to see lots more mining for rare earths and green minerals like cobalt and aluminum. And um, that, of course, you know, presents all sorts of potential challenges in terms of negative environmental and human rights impacts. So um, this is, you know, a sort of an on the ground look into what you know, what, what goes on inside these mines. Um, and, uh, you know, there's another project that we're doing, which is, you know, much, I think, much higher end um, called Team Sayari. And that's really kind of this Africa-driven, Africa-focused children's series. And it's a collaboration with Disney and several Africa-based organizations. One's called Wildlife Direct and another's White Rhino Production. So it's sort of, kids talking to kids. It's a combination of animation and documentary footage to really educate people about um, conservation and wildlife and, you know, the, the potential that youth have to make a difference when it comes to um, wildlife. So those are 
two examples of, you know, somewhat more creative approaches that AIDS trying to bring to the table. I think one thing that I would say is that a lot of the most innovative work that's happening in multimedia that I've seen, um, you know, requires like a degree of connectivity and, and technology that just isn't accessible in the places where we work. And so one thing that's really important to keep in mind for us is just meeting people where they are when it comes to technology. And radio is um, in many places a more viable way to reach people than, than video or, you know, and certainly a virtual reality creation. Um, so we do rely quite a bit on radio. And the other thing to keep in mind for us is just um, the gendered reality of technology. So many fewer women in the developing countries where we're working have access to cell phones. Um, than, than men, and they may also have much less access to education and be less well equipped to use cell phones. So, um, and of course there's internet connectivity issues. We have the Power uh, Africa initiative, which is trying to address the 80 million people on the African continent who still don't even have power. So just to give you some sense of the, you know, just the dramatic kind of differences in the realities that people are, are living in 